Hi everybody, welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Today's bird of focus is the Mississippi kite. Uh, this bird here next to me, it, it, it's one of the lesser known birds of prey uh, out there. They're, they're smallish and they are not as conspicuous as a lot of the birds of prey are, like uh, red-tailed hawks that sit out on telephone poles out in the open, and um, the Cooper's hawks that zip through our backyards and, and maybe catch a bird now and again. Uh, and the Mississippi kite is a more of a southern bird in nature. I'm going to pull up the map here and let you uh, take a look at that. And you can see um, that the breeding range, which is the orangish red color, uh, it is primarily a southern bird. Now, this bird has been expanding, uh, and uh, especially, I know, in our area, the personal witness to this, here in the Kansas City area 30 years ago, we hardly had any nests uh, that were noted uh, around the Kansas City urban area, and now there are several uh, people uh, bring in pictures to me and, and uh, describe them to them, and, and yes, they, they do. Um, and what's really interesting about this, too, is that the the two populations almost the eastern the southeastern u.s where i grew up um i know that now in my childhood home in the last few years when i've been by there i have actually seen the mississippi kites in the backyard uh some large trees that were the very very back of the yard i grew up in uh, nesting in there and uh they they have that group down there in the southeastern u.s and then we have the great plains birds that are uh, obviously here in the Kansas City region, and, and you can see Oklahoma, Kansas, Kansas, places like that, um, they behave somewhat differently. And so when we talk about tendencies, we kind of have to divide those up. But I want you to look at that migration route. Um, while they nest up here in, the, in like, say, the southeastern U.S. And, and here in the Great Plains, they winter down there in the southern two-thirds of, of South America, and that's quite a journey. And they, they make that um, that migration every year, and they migrate in really mass numbers, a lot, huge flocks of them, uh, and you know, there's been some, you know, hawk watch areas that have documented tons of them. Now, we were bird watching one year down in the, the southeastern uh, tip of Texas in the spring migration, and we ran in a couple of different times. I've run into flocks when I've been down there. The one we uh, ran into one year had a group of people down there, and the Mississippi kites came flying really low over uh, the park we were at, and we could see them. And there were dozens upon dozens of these birds just uh, cycling by and, and swooping up insects. And yes, while they're birds of prey, and they will eat things like oh, snakes, and uh, and they'll even walk around in water. They, they, they wide dry. But believe me, the bulk of their diet is insects, and they are uh, commonly known as a cicada specialist. They actually do really well in years with cicadas. And I know you people in the eastern <laughs> part of the U.S. are saying, boy, they're going to have a lot of babies this year. They're going to be able to survive. But they are uh, incredible birds. And they, they, what I love watching them do is they tend to you know, fly really low over the tops of trees. And you'll see them real quickly go down and snatch uh, up the, uh, at the top of a tree. And when they fly away, they, they may have a, some leaves in their talons. And you'll see them bend over, and, and they'll get the, the cicada or whatever insects they caught, and then they'll let go, and the, the leaves will fly, uh, flutter down from their talons, and they'll, they'll eat the food in, um, in flight, which is really cool there. Uh, they, they are one of the great insectivores uh, uh, that help uh, us out in nature. So like I said, they be behave differently. Now, th this is a classic flight profile. This is a juvenile bird. You can uh, tell from that original bird I threw up, and I'll throw a picture back up here for another adult. But this is a juvenile bird. But this is the best shot I had of them in that show that flight profile. They're fairly long-tailed, and which, of course, I've talked many times about how the tail is the rudder on the birds, so and that makes them very maneuverable when they have a long tail. But uh, they, all, they also have more, more falcon-like wings. They have very sharp, pointed wing tips. Uh, not quite as exaggerated as falcons, but um, they, they, they are very maneuverable birds, masters of flight. Uh, and when I talked about, back to that, the eastern population and the western population is acting a little bit differently. In the east, southeastern U.S., they tend to be more 
solitary in, in, in with their nesting and uh, and they use uh, really old growth bottom wood uh, uh, hardwoods and on water uh, uh, in those areas and the swamps of southeastern New North Carolina where I grew up and in, in the southeastern U.S. Uh, but out here in the plains, of course, we don't have as much water as they do in the in the southeast. So, but they do nest more colonially in uh, the the Midwest. So several groups of nests in the same area and their nests are incredibly varied. Uh, they, they, <laughs> here's an example that is a likely an old squirrel's nest they have built on top of. Now they, they're one, you know, most birds don't use a lot of leaves, but uh, kites will do that. And they'll also use Spanish moss for people in the Southeast and that uh, in their nest, but they tend to use lots of sticks. Um, and then they, <laughs> in this case, they took advantage of an old squirrel's nest and built right on top of it, which is really, really cool. And one thing they're really well known for is being very aggressive at guarding their nest. Uh, they will uh, chase and dive bomb uh, uh, humans and, and also animals that come close to their nest. Uh, and uh, there was a story a few years ago, there was a, a pair that built a nest out in, in a cemetery out in a town in Kansas. And when people were trying to come out and put flowers on the grave during the nesting season, these kites would dive at them and swoop at them and people got upset and the newspaper did a story on them and they uh, they got publicity on it. But they will if you come close to their nest. Now there's lots of birds that will do that, but kites are pretty famous for aggressively guarding their nest. And and, and I, I said it the first about how their numbers have recuperated. We, we talk about DDT and, and when we remove DDT from the market and all the birds of prey that have problems with their eggshell thinning because of that chemical. And, and, one, and, and of course, bald eagles have been the big uh, success story from once we banned DDT from the environment. Uh, and there, of course, there's been a great deal of effort to get our national symbol back, populations back. But some birds kind of went under the radar as far as their recovery go. And kites are one of them. Mississippi kites are, are certainly a bird that has benefited from it. Um, and when we, it, when we talk about where they belong. Uh, the Mississippi kites are hawks. They're in a big group. It includes hawks and eagles uh, and they uh, and harriers. They're they're in that same group, but they're kind of into their group subgroup to themselves uh, because of that body shape and their lifestyles and things. So the kites are. Uh, in themselves and I, I, the ones that we have most commonly and the focus here is the Mississippi kite, but we also have in the very southeastern United States, uh, we have the swallowtail kite, which is one of the most beautiful birds you're ever going to see. And in Florida, the endangered species, the, the Everglades snail kite down there. And in the southwest, you guys have the black shoulder kite. Uh, so there are more than one kind of kite in the country, but this the, the Mississippi kite is certainly one that... Um, I wanted to focus on today. They uh, and they're they're so fun to watch. I know that right here, close to my house, right down the street, is a great example of how you often see them. Um, they they might they're in fairly dense woodlands or you know semi open woodlands in our area, but when there's a tree uh, that has uh, like a big dead limb that sticks up on it, uh, they love to sit out in the open on that dead limb. Now, they're, they may be nesting somewhere really close to there uh, in the foliage, but they, when they perch up, and they're in, especially in the mornings and the evenings, you, that's how you'll see these kites sitting up here. And here in the Midwest, another thing that makes them different from the Southeast guys is that they tend to be fairly colony uh, uh, clusters of them. So if there's one Mississippi kite nest in the area, then there's probably several in that area. Uh, and they'll travel and hunt in groups together. I know uh, in the in the fall, and well, say fall, like August, when high school football games start here in our area, um, they they will gather at it's a sunset when those when the football lights are on for the football field and there's tons of insects flying around the kites will land and gather on to the lighting and fly out and catch these take advantage of all this free insects and i've heard people say oh there was a bunch of seagulls at the football game the other night well it's actually the kites uh, that were doing that and um but they because of their white and gray bodies then uh people will confuse them with uh the, the a seagull. Just remember, no such thing as a seagull. They're all gulls. Um, and then once they they nest, then you start seeing darker birds. The the juvenile bird that, that hatched this year 
it's much darker than the adult, which is crisp white and gray. Well, the juvenile birds have the striping on them um, and they'll be mixed in in the fall, especially. And if you're really lucky, like one of my customers, I know this picture is hard to see because it was taken away out of it, but that is actually a Mississippi kite in her bird bath in her backyard that's not very far from the store uh, here in, in Kansas City. And that they come and she says she sees them, you know, two and three, four times. And they come in and land and they nest somewhere close by there. So the Mississippi kite is a wonderful bird, a very unique shape, a very helpful bird to our environment. It's unique and it's uh, it kind of is, is hunting and uh, and its place uh, among nature. So be on the lookout for them. They're they're wonderful birds and if you do have them, you know definitely enjoy them. Um, if you yeah, if you do, let me know in the comments. You know if you got uh, kites nesting by you and they're getting like I said, they're expanding and they're, if you on that range map you saw dots up into Iowa and and further places north where they seem to be expanding a bit. So. The Mississippi kite, a fantastic bird, um, a, a one that you really want in your yard. So uh, great idea for a program. That was a special request from YouTube, uh, and uh, please uh, send in more. They, uh, I, We want to talk about what you want us to talk about, and this is a bird of summer here. Great time to talk about them. So thanks for that idea. Uh, give us a like. Give us a share. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. Until then, come by and let's talk birds.